Good morning, good afternoon, good evening to all of you for jo joining us from around the world. I'm Mark Spiegler, Global Director of Art Basel. Um, before I introduce the panel and the, the talk and do a little bit more time for people to join us on the Zoom, I'll briefly run through a couple of housekeeping issues. We always like to receive your questions and your comments. At the bottom of your screen, you'll see a Q&A function where you can type in comments and we'll respond to as many as we can. If you could keep your comments towards the end because it gets a little fast and furious and we want to see the questions while we're doing this. We also have simultaneous translation into Mandarin. Uh, you can choose that as a preferred audio channel. Um, in our Voices From series, we've been to Tokyo, we've been to Sydney for these city-focused talks in recent weeks, but today we're staying closer to home with the conversation on the Basel art scene. The city has an incredibly rich cultural history. The collection of the Kunstmuseum was purchased by the city and the university in 1661, making it the world's oldest municipal art museum. And for a small Swiss city, it has always had an outsized influence on the global art scene, along with the local community who are consistently engaged and supportive of the arts. Faced with the recent challenges posed by the global pandemic, this support for the arts has been illustrated by the city coming together to stage Kunsttag in Basel, which opens this Thursday and runs through the weekend. It was initiated by Carlo Knoll, Valerie Knoll, Daniel Karachevich, curator of programs at the Kunstmuseum Basel, and Petra Sig of the Friends of the Kunstmuseum Basel. The Kunsttag is four days of exhibitions, performances, and activations throughout the city in nearly 50 different venues. One of the pillars of that, of that, of the Kunsttag, will be a public exhibition, which will take over the streets and squares of Basel. This is being jointly curated by Daniel Karachevich from the um, Kunstmuseum, Elena Filipovich of the Kunsthalle of Basel, Samuel Leuenberger, who's the curator of Art Basel's parkour sector, and one of today's panelists, Dr. Ines Goldbach, director of the Kunsthaus Basel Land. Which brings me to the introduction of our fantastic panel. We have Ines. Ines, if you could wave and let people know who you are. <laughs> um, we have Dr. Josef Helfenstein, director of the Kunstmuseum Basel. And we have Johanna Kamm, who's the director of the Lista Art Fair. Um, I'll start with Joseph. Joseph became the director of the Kunstmuseum Basel in 2016. Before joining the Kunstmuseum, he held a number of prominent positions at institutions in Switzerland and the United States, including serving as the director of the Manil Collection and Foundation in Houston from 2004 until 2015. The Kunstmuseum Basel contains paintings and artworks from the Renaissance to the present day, encompassing Holbein, Cranach, Monet, Van Gogh, Picasso, Warhol, and many contemporary artists acquired since Joseph arrived. Joseph, my question to you. You run the oldest art museum in the world and one of Europe's major institutions, and obviously this period has had a huge impact for you and your staff. So I'd like to know, you know, to what extent has this been a period in which you and your team have developed initiatives that you see carrying forward once the situation becomes more predictable? Well, thank you, Mark. Um, I believe, like for all of us in the art world and for us at the Kunstmuseum Basel too, it felt like a forced retreat. You know, that lockdown was like, um, in a way, totally something that has never happened before. And on the other hand, um, given, on, give, given what's going on in the world, one couldn't be completely surprised that things were really getting out of, out of control. So uh, for us, we, uh, my team and myself, many had home office, so uh, we never had this kind of situation where people uh, had to communicate in a different way. We are not very digitally adult as I would like us to be, but we have made a push to become better, to have a more um, sort of um, mature digital program to reach our audiences, to talk with donors, to talk with, with the public. Um, so, so that was, uh, we really pushed our uh, digital communication. That was one thing. Um, An other uh, positive thing I thought was there was a different kind of feeling among staff. And I've heard that from many colleagues all over the world. You know, this is a very, challenging time for all of us. And um, for those of us who work in museums and in the art world in general, I think we, we are lucky in a way because we have, uh, we, we work with beautiful things. We uh, work with very really interesting things, with fascinating things. So uh, in our case, you know, we have a huge collection of, as you said, 700 years of 
mostly Western art history, more than 300,000 works of art. It's, it's a kind of a resource that is way bigger than, than we are as individuals. So I believe it's important to keep that uh, kind of horizon that, uh, you know, we are only the stewards of something as we as global citizens are only visitors on this planet and therefore on the earth, which is a kind of a threatened um, thing too. So I think we, for us, it's been a, it's been a really uh, important thing and, and a good thing to kind of stop, to, to reflect. For example, we have not, um, we've decided not to do any programming in 2023. Uh, it starts to make me a bit nervous because 2023 is two years from now and um, two and a half years from now. But we really felt that we need to think uh, more about how is the world, how can we react, how can we be nimble as an institution. You know, an old museum like this is like a tree and trees are very, and this is an old tree, and trees are very slow and museums are very slow too. The bigger they are, the slower they are. But I believe our, our challenges and will always be to kind of be a mirror of the world because we are, you know, we are a public institution. We don't, we don't own what we have. It's for the public, it's for the public good, it's for the world. And I believe that's, that's very important. So we did stop sort of thinking uh, to go just forward as we have done. We, we really need to think about how to rethink our programming in 2023 and therefore we have we have not made any decisions yet so this is a, a rather this is the most concrete maybe um, uh, result from that uh, thinking process so you're going to just to be clear you're going to pause entirely for a year no 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 okay. we just <laughs> haven't made any final plans no i'm glad uh -huh. asked okay you. all right <laughs> No, no, we are not closing it, no, no. But we have forced ourselves or committed ourselves to think how mm -hmm. to continue, you know. So right. we, you know, we may not do uh, 15 exhibitions, but only five, or I don't know. Mm -hmm. Or we may do completely different programs, uh, or we may change our, um, I don't know, we may change some fundamental things. I just mm -hmm. believe institutions like ours and in a time we live in we're in a very vulnerable time i think we need to be responsive to those kind of uh, you know uncertainties i i i really feel kind of quite uh, quite passionately about that i think it's a chance too for us as a team to really uh, you know we conceptualize our work and to uh, prioritize in a way too what 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 is really important what can can we give to the world. Right. Thank you, Joseph. I'm going to go to, to Ines Goldbach now. Um, Ines has been the director of the Kunsthaus Basel Lawn since 2013, having previously worked as a curator of the Rouse Miller collection at the Holland for Neue Kunst in Schaffhausen. The Kunsthaus Basel Lawn itself, which we can see behind her, opened in 1998. It's a repurposed factory building, um, and it provides, provides a platform for young as well as established artists. Um, this week, I think you're opening an exhibition, which you're currently installing. Um, you can tell us about that in a minute. Um, and as I mentioned in my introduction, Ines is also one of the co-curators of The Possible is Monstrous, the week's outdoor exhibition, this week's outdoor exhibition is with the Kunsttage. Ines, you closed, actually, you were relatively lucky. Um, you only closed for a period of seven weeks. Um, but of course, given the realities of the situation, there's still a lot of adaptations. Um, and I'm curious, a little bit the same question to you as to Yosef before. To what extent do you see what you're doing now as transitional, and to what extent do you see it as things which will carry on once things are calmer again? Right. I think it's interesting if you mention the word transition, because I think, yeah, we all do not really know how long this will take, as, as Yosef just mentioned. So I think it's different to plan, but on the other side, I think all these certain moments brought something quite positive. It's totally different in here at the Kunsthaus Basel Land. We are only in four. We are four plus the technicians, plus the, the guards. And I think that to stay on the positive side, it's also quite nice because you can be very flexible. You can react immediately. So immediately when we had to close the Kunsthaus, two days, days later, we could also offer a lot of programs, not only online programs. There was something, and as you mentioned, what will maybe stay after all these times, we invented something like the so-called cultural telephone, a kind of hotline. 
And during the lockdown, that was something, an initiative that was um, open for everybody every week. And you can call us. You can call us every week and we can talk about, not through social media, but directly in a conversation. We can talk about art, about an exhibition. And this is something, also we are now open now, um, that the people really demand for this hotline. And we still have this on display. We still have this as an offer. And I think all these little experiences, they showed us as well that there's a demand, not only for a direct experience of art, but for a direct dialogue towards the art. And as you just mentioned, the exhibitions here, I'm not only behind, but I'm in. So this is something we opened last week, two solo exhibitions by Tufan Tran from based in, in Paris and Sheriff Wacht by based also in in Santa Barbara, but also in Tel Aviv. But of course, it's difficult for all these artists to come in. And maybe this is also something I have to think about. This is a challenge because normally, as I'm only working with living artists, and I always avoid to invite only the, the works and then to, to install them. Especially, I invite the artists to do something together with me, to create something new. But how should I face this situation now that they can't travel? And this is, I'm sure, something that I have to think about. How can we can go forward with this new situation now? Okay, so two follow-up questions, or rather two questions. One is, how have you faced the situation, you know, um, of, of not being able to have artists present all the time and not being able to work with them in situ? you lose a lot of things because you always have to think, think that the, the thought maybe as well, everything is done when the works arrive. But I think that is the moment when you have to be creative, when you start together with the artist to do something new. So of course you will miss something, but this is something we have to face and maybe we have to find alternatives, how to do, how to work with that. But of course, this is, I think, the harsh challenge also for a situation like mine, focusing on something that I want to be a complicity with the artists. I want to do something new together with them here in situ. They should work here with the architecture. So this, yeah. I'm sure, it will be something new. Yeah, I mean, I think it's, it's you know, like so many of us, you know, you're, all, you're not doing quite the job that you signed up for, but trying to figure out how to do it anyway. Um, the second question I had was about the outdoor, the, the outdoor project. Um, maybe you could talk a little bit about the, the process for it, the artists involved. Obviously, it also was done with a certain kind of constraints. In comparison, you know, it's a kind of cousin to parkour or to school, uh, sculpture dog in Munster or whatever. And I think, but it's being done in a situation where you can't easily fly in artists to make work in situ and you can't easily ship things across borders. And so, so how do you do this kind of exhibition under these constraints? You're right. There are some very high constraints, but maybe to go one step before, I think it's important that the Kunsttage and also especially the sculpture project is not because of, but despite of. And I think there's a great difference behind this. So all the whole program, like also the selection of the artists, that was something you mentioned already, the four curators, we joined together. And I think it was in the end of, of July, we were start, starting talking about it because it was clear that there will be Kunsttage Basel, but we wanted to do something that really is something to, to face as well, this kind of joint event and to bring also the people from the historical part from Basel also to the new area, the Dreispitz area, which many of you might know regarding the, the Schaulager, the university, different institutions like the, the HEC, for example, House for Electronic Arts. So to create a certain line of parkour, but here as well, we invited now within a short time of maybe less than six weeks, we invited 10 artists. And it was, I think, also the result of so many people working together. Also the, the two cantons, of course, giving us the support, Basel Land and Basel City, giving us within a short time the support, the financial to support. And I think also the, the artists, also for them, it was a challenge, you know, to get a call like three, three weeks before and telling them it would be marvelous if you're in, do you want to join? And main of, many of them, they are 10, but I think at least only two or three were able to travel and to see the space and to the location. So a lot of trust is needed, of course, and openness to what we're doing there. I mean, I will say this, it's, it's a miracle of sorts that this is happening at all. I mean, I remember um, 
Joseph and I had coffee actually on the day specifically that Art Basel should have opened in June, so middle of June. Um, and we said, wouldn't it be great if something could happen? And then, of course, you know, other people, you know, had a similar idea and then it all came together. And I mean, it's, you know, I'm going to, I don't know if this is going to work on camera, but I mean, I have, I see the same here. <laughs> this is the whole thing. And there's, there's 50 plus exhibitions. And the great thing about this, actually, what I love is that the smallest institutions, the biggest institutions, the smallest galleries are all sort of on equal footing. And I think in that sense, it's a very collaborative sort of effort. Um, I'm going to go to Johanna. Um, Johanna has been the director of the Lista Art Fair in Basel since 2018. Um, she's both a former client of mine in the sense that she was a gallerist at Art Basel for a long time and also a former colleague of mine in the sense that she was on the committee for Art Basel Miami Beach. Um, Lista, every year since 1996, has exhibited a younger generation of galleries coinciding with the staging of Art Basel. I mean, um, I think it's fair to say that it's considered, widely considered, by far the best fair for young art in the world, um, for young galleries. Um, after Art Basel canceled, Joanna persisted and still kept trying to push to try to make it happen. And originally, this her show would have been happening this week. Um, obviously, in the end, in, in she can talk about why, it, she also had to cancel. Um, but I think, you know, in a way, looking further back, before the troubles of this year, I think, to my mind, Joanna, I think to some extent what's happening this week is reflective of the broader atmosphere in Basel and the attitude towards culture that's made Lista so successful. How do you see this? Do you see parallels and modus operandi, which are extending into this moment, you know, into this unprecedented moment from the past? Um, yeah, thank you so much, Mark, for this really nice introduction. But answering your question, I would say absolutely. There's a commitment to art here in Basel and that from really most diverse scenes, which I have not yet experienced in this way before. And maybe to explain a bit this commitment, um, it's good to look at the history of Lister. Um, there you can understand the crucial role played by Basel and its citizens in making Lister what it is actually. And this from so many different local entities who are involved. And I think also, which is really important, is general attitude of collaboration and support you can find here. And just to give some examples from, for example, from the very beginning um, of LISTA, the tenants of Werkraum Batek, where LISTA takes place since um, 96, they move out of their studios and workshops to give their space um, to a younger generation of galleries and artists once a year. Or, like our main partner, the private bank, Putzwiller, has supported Lister also for 24 years now, which is really, I think, pretty unique. And even this year, also the fair could not take place. They stood by us the whole time and helped us even more. So there's from this whole, yeah, a lot from the community support. And I think also the small gestures are extremely important, like people from Basel, they offer us their apartments at a very fair price. So that we can, for example, provide our galleries with accommodation that they can afford. Or Kaserne, this is an important um, place for theater and for concerts. They invited us to have list a party at their place. So actually I have the feeling almost everybody in the cultural field is in exchange with us. And of course, not to forget also the um, close exchange um, we have with Art Basel and with you which has been extremely valuable for us, especially in the last six months. And the structure of LISTA itself also tells a lot about Basel because um, with the departure of my predecessor, Peter Bloyer, LISTA now belongs to a foundation and this foundation consists of a group of people here from Basel who are all really committed to ensuring that list can continue the literacy of Peter. And this means to really to dedicate um, itself to the promotion of young contemporary art and not to be commercialized. But it's also, I think, something very specific and very special. So even so, if list is clearly a fair for an international professional audience, it's also an art event with and for the people of Basel. And Therefore, um, for us, it was really important after we had to cancel the fair 
to at least do something um, in the city that is for the local. And so we developed a poster project entitled Rewriting Our Imaginations, for which the galleries have selected an artist who has addressed um, the question of what a new imagination could look like after that, which has previously existed only in our imagination, is um, now becoming reality like the pandemic. And 70 international artists, they have um, created a poster and these are now currently on display in the public space in Basel. So you, you can see them on the public billboards when you just walk in the city. And it's, I think, about more than 50 different locations in the city. Unfortunately, I must say, regarding the Kunsthage Basel, the exhibition ends already on the 15th of um, September because we couldn't get um, the billboards for a longer time. And therefore, we are not physically present during the Kunsthage Basel, but with our new digital format, Liste Showtime, where our galleries um, are presenting each one artist. And also these posters you can, can view there and um, also purchase. Yeah, but, you, can, you um, can buy them and print them out, right? So yes, you can, there's yes. no shipping cost, yeah. Exactly, I was not sure how much advertisement I can make. <laughs> I'll advertise it for you, it's okay. <laughs> but um, yeah, just as said, it's, um, I think it's really this, such a spirit in town that Kunsthage Basel was born. And this spirit of to do something together, even in this difficult, especially in these difficult times, to support each, each other. And I think also remarkable is um, whether it is commercial or non-commercial. So I think this really reflects um, very good the community and the spirit of Basel. Um, I'm going to have a few questions now. Thank you, John. I'm going to have a, a few questions for the panel in, in general, but you know, the audience members should feel free to start putting in questions. Again, use a little Q&A function at the bottom of your screen, and we'll try to sort through and get to as many questions as possible. Um, a question for you, Yosef, and then also to Ines afterwards. Um, in comparison with many other parts of the world, Europe, and specifically the region made up of Germany, Switzerland, and Austria, has had a had it relatively easy through this whole crisis. Um, when you talk to your colleagues in other parts of the world, how does your experience in relaunching compare and contrast with theirs? I know for a while, at least, many of the major museum directors were doing kind of a weekly Zoom or something. I don't know if that continued, but you know, obviously I imagine you're in touch not only with your colleagues here, but also with your colleagues all over the world. And what is it, you know, when you talk about relaunching, how does it sound to them? What are they saying? Yes, uh, in, in fact, I'm glad you bring that up uh, because maybe one of the great things about this crisis is that I think the whole sense of community, not just locally, but really globally, has enormously grown. And uh, especially, I believe, among art people and among maybe museum institutions. At least I find that wonderful, really. It's a, it's a great uh, result from that crisis. And I hope it will continue because, unfortunately, the crisis will continue. So yes, we did a lot of talking and still do. Just an hour ago, I had a, um, a, a, the director from the Schmolian Museum in Oxford on the phone and, and their situation is much more complicated than ours, although they're not so far away. But what I felt was uh, striking is that, um, you know, things were changing so quickly. Um, like in the beginning, when we had our first talk among museum directors, for example, we could learn a lot from Indonesia because they had dealt enormously well with the, the first you know, wave and they were really, really very, very good how they had uh, reacted to this problem. And, but then you know, later on, they, the situation there had changed completely. Uh, they had another total, totally different situation. And even within the US, the, the, there are cities and, of course, museums that are much less affected than others, especially on the East and on the West Coast. So it's dramatically different. I think this is something that I've never, no, nobody has ever experienced before, that things are so quickly changing. Um, when we opened earlier than most others, like the museums in Germany and some museums in Austria and we in Switzerland um, after two months. Of course, then we were sort of um, asked, how is it, what did you do, how, you know, a lot of logistical stuff, like 
spacing and, and counting people and making sure security for visitors was guaranteed and all of that. But, and I think we, we, you know, we can't reinvent the wheel. It's, we all have the same problem. But what is striking that we uh, think there's an enormous um, amount of uh, communication, of uh, sharing ideas, of helping one another. For example, you know, we still, many of us have loans that are stranded for, for half a year or so. Uh, we have important loans, you know, in overseas. Uh, and uh, most of us, we just, you know, the, the thing, uh, something that could be very complicated actually became very easy to resolve because we all work together and we, we resolved it. So a lot of, uh, I'm, I'm very uh, really pleased and impressed by the way uh, people have been reacting and helping one another and sharing experiences and therefore we all can learn and sort of react to uh, small things that are important. I just also can confirm what you're just um, saying, Joseph. So I think I have the same, same feeling by talking to colleagues. So there's a great openness to share ideas, to think about what we can we do together maybe. So if we have the same, same problems. For example, the, the exhibition by Sharif Wocket that we opened last week, that is a cooperation and also a co-curatorship with a friend and also of course a colleague from Tel Aviv, Nicola Trezzi from the CCA. And I think these kind of we know we face all the same problem and then it, it's, it's, it's nice to think about new solutions. But what you asked before, Mark, like um, what is the difference maybe? I think there's something that you really feel over here. You have very good partners. You have also from a governmental support. You have um, a lot of companies, privates. They're really foundation and they tell you also you have to shift and change the exhibitions, some of them to next year or to the following year they stay by your side. And I think this is something quite exceptional. It's, that's not global-wide in the same way. So I think thinking about also new formats to offer mediation programs, etc., you need to have this kind of certainty that you get the money, that you will have all the possibilities to go forward and to plan and to be this kind of dynamic moment. But of course, you need, you need this financial support. So I think from that side, we are very happy that we have these very, very good partners. Yeah. I mean, I think for, for those of you around the world who are not familiar with, with the ecosystem in Switzerland, I've, I've always thought about it as being exceptionally well balanced in the sense that you have strong galleries, you have strong corporate philanthropy and partnership, you have strong institutions, um, you know, you also have strong governmental support for artists, you know, at all stages of their careers. And I think it's, in this particular moment, um, you know, I think Switzerland probably benefits from one of the one of the strongest sort of support for culture, you know, in the world. And I think it's, you know, the, this project is reflective of that. You know, you know that the fact that you know two art fairs and many private galleries and many institutions and many sort of off spaces, you know, with the support of the government, have been able to pull something off. In I mean, basically, you know, from the six weeks, eight weeks, depending on how you count it. I mean, you know, um, and it started with a, a, a disastrous Zoom call and yet it improved from there. So, I mean, I think it's, you know, I think we really learned by doing, you know, and that was it. that was really interesting. And I think it's, you know, there's been a, a time, but also a, a, um, a need and a desire for, for us to work together. I mean, I always actually thought of Basel as, as a town where the institutions and the fair and the galleries work pretty well together. But I think in this particular case, it's been even more so. Um, I mean, I know, I'm curious what Joanna says, but I have to say, I mean, I've, I've never been more in touch with galleries and fellow and with the client galleries, but also with the fellow fair directors than I have, you know, because again, it's this question of like, what do you think is going to happen? How do you do this? And then, you know, inevitably that text message just says, hey, I'm really sorry. I know what you went through. It must have been really tough, you know, Good luck and recover next week. I mean, Joanna, do you have that same sense of sort of this collaborative, global collaboration? Yeah, this is this is amazing. For me, it feels like this community we have now with the galleries, this is even stronger than usually when you meet at the fair, because we spend now the time from March until now within I don't know how many Zoom meetings and really discussing with them what 
what should we do and discussing ideas and discussing alternative models and all this. So it's something um, which is, um, yeah, um, really worked out super well. And I kind of, yeah, have the feeling something new was now, um, there's something new created with this. And um, this is something also where I have the feeling we, we should continue, you know, maybe, I don't know how and all this we have to reflect now, but, um, but I think it makes sense, you know, to speak with the people way more often. And even, you know, when you, what we have done before is we, were, we traveled a lot. And then of course, it's also nice meeting with people in person, but I think also the galleries, they, they really, they like the, to talk to each other, you know, and they're not so often met them from, I don't know, um, Peru and from China or wherever. So, so it's, um, I think this is really something great what there happened. And I think also this idea of collaboration became so strong and I think it became really strong worldwide. So this is something, even if it's maybe at the moment um, so important and maybe in a year not so important anymore, I really hope that knowing that we can kind of concert together that this change our behavior also in the longer term. This would be really great. I have to bring it back from the global artistic community to Basel specifically. Um, and I'll start, I'll start with you, Ines. Um, looking a week from now, you know, when the Kunsttage of Basel has come to, has come to its finale, um, what does success look like for you? What, is, what are you hoping the next week will bring Basel to the art world? To be honest, I think we mentioned already something that was and still is already successful, like working together and doing so many things within that short time span. As you mm -hmm. mentioned, huh? we all started with a white, white yeah. sheet of paper. But on the other hand, I think it's also good. It's an example that you can do something in the moment of crisis, despite the moment of crisis, you can do something that brings the whole city together. And I think this is something I think it's important to experience by heart. And maybe this could work also as an example, as an example for other cities, other countries as well, that despite everything, we have moments that we can create something, we can do something, we can go forward because in the end, we can be sure that, uh, of course, this is not the only crisis I'm sure we have to face in our generation and we should be prepared somehow and we should be also positive. So I think, to spread out something positive out here from the Kunsttage, that regarding all these restraints, we are able to, to do something, to realize something and to have a good experience and ho hopefully also to inspire the people who experience these artworks and to inspire all these who visit the exhibitions and the institutions. Because we need a lot of, of course, energy, positive power. And I'm sure, and this would be mm -hmm. hopefully the success I, I wish for the Kunsttage, that afterwards we will be a bit different than before. Josef, yeah. what, is, what does success look like for you a week from now? Well, I believe it, it's already been said, you know, the fact that we came together and are coming together is already the success. So in a, in a way, the process of thinking of, of, about all of this and to really, you know, to, to create this Kunsttage Basel is the success. We have no idea who will come. I hope uh, people will come, obviously. Uh, I've heard a lot of excitement. We hope that not only people from Basel and Switzerland will come, but also from neighboring countries and so. But I believe, um, the, as, as Ines just said, and as every and Johanna has said, and you too, it's, I think the most important thing is that we do this. Because um, the you know, we live in a very strange and challenging time and it won't change very quickly, I believe. It won't, things won't improve uh, probably in terms of economic uh, situation and that will also be threatening for all of us as institution. But you know, the, the, the core thing we, we, we do is we, we deal with art, you know, we, we really care for art. Of course, that's our core business at the Kunstmuseum, people, uh, institutions that collect but um, I've just seen an artist last Saturday whose work we are now showing, an artist from, from Belgium, um, 
uh, by the way, it's David Clairbaut. Um, we just opened on uh, just a little bit uh, a week ago, we opened a new presentation, new two new presentations of six contemporary artists. They're all, you know, they're all alive, they're all good, but none of them other than, uh, in this case, um, one uh, could come, but I believe that's less important than the fact that we are showing their works, you know, even if they, these artists cannot be here and we would love to have talks and events and, and uh, all of that. But even if we can't do that, our main job is to show great work. And I believe we, uh, especially as a museum with a fantastic collection, that's our main job. And I hope that's what I also think is wonderful about Kunsttage, as has been said, that you know, off spaces, galleries, um, um, all kinds of institutions, the Kunsthaus Basel and the Kunsthalle, the Fondation Beiler, all these institutions, the, the Schaulager and um, the Museum Tangle, you know, all these different institutions, many of which show contemporary art, they're all part of this and then many others too. And there's no hierarchy, and I believe that's uh, that's the answer that is needed in a situation like that. Yeah, yeah. As I said, one of my favorite things about this about the the folder, this giant Vaporello, is that is that you know you there's no there's no no one has a bigger thing, no one has a smaller thing. You just have to read through it and see the content on it. Um, Joanna, same question for you. Um, you, I mean, you and I both don't have fares. So, what, is it, what does it look like a week from now? How do we, how do we measure success in terms of the efforts that we put into it? You first. You mean um, how we measure the success of next week? Yeah, of this week actually. Oh, this week. Oh, yeah, it's already Monday. Sorry. <laughs> it's already Monday. I know the feeling. <laughs> but I think for, for us, it's. Um, how, how to measure. I think it's maybe what Joseph was saying, like um, if people are coming and really appreciating um, that art is on display and that you can experience art, and I must say from my perspective, especially young contemporary art, um, which is, um, I think in this digital world we are living at the moment, a bit more difficult to understand and to explore. So, so I just hope that people take the chance, you know, that there is now this incredible great offer and um, that they're really um, enthusiastic about what um, all these great institutions have put together now in this very, very short time. Yeah. I mean, I have to say, um, reflecting on the same question that I posed to the three of you, um, I remember when I came back from the coffee that I mentioned that Yosef and I had whenever it was 11th of June or something. And it was the Tuesday. And um, I was wearing a nice suit because, you know, under normal conditions, Yosef and I dress up nicely when we see each other. And I walked across the bridge back to Messeplatz and I arrived at Messeplatz purely by chance, exactly at 11 a.m., exactly when there would have been, you know, a few thousand people standing in front. And it was completely empty. Um, and I have to say that kind of, it, it hit me in a way that I think wasn't, that I didn't really even start recovering from until last week when I was in Berlin. And when I, when I was in, I went to Berlin for gallery weekend and I saw not a lot of internationals in the same way that we won't have a lot of internationals this week in Basel, but to see the gallerists out, to see the artists out, to see the curators out, to see the people who in one way or another have been sort of, you know, withdrawn, collapsed onto themselves, taking care of their friends and their family, maybe scared for their health, to see people out again and to see, to see art in person, you know, to see dozens of exhibitions, you know, in person and not online. I think, um, you know, because in the end, I think that's what brings us all together. And I think, I think if we, and I'm sure we will, like I'm sure, that by Monday, all of our spirits will have lifted a little bit more just to see people who have the same kind of passion that we have and just see art, which is the thing that, that you know, which is that shared passion. Um, I'm going to go to questions from the audience. Uh, again, my apologies to anyone whose question I don't get to, but let's see what we've got. Um, here's a question from uh, 
Bruno Bosch, who's an, an, a legal expert, um, although his question is not about law. Um, it's actually about empathy, which I think has been one of the big topics, you know, um, of this period. Um, and I think as leaders, you know, the notion has, has to be that you have to be humble, empathetic, and transparent. Um, and I'm going to focus on empathy because his question is, is have you, do you feel like in this period you've learned to read your public better? Um, I'll start with Ines. Do you feel like this is a, that in a way, despite the fact that you haven't seen them, this has been perhaps a chance to think about and connect with, with your institution's audience in a different, better way? Yeah, definitely. Because I think you, you really felt there's a demand for art. And I think it's, of course, you always hope that it is like this, but you really felt it. As I mentioned before, the cultural telephone, that was something, of course, there are so many people who have no access to internet and maybe are not also fans of social media channels. Should we leave them out or what should we do? So I think also to feel that there are different different audiences and you can do so much so many things you can offer so many things and as soon as we open the Kunsthaus after I don't know exactly six, six or seven weeks of the lockdown so there were there was a kind of a crowd over here and it was it was nice to feel that they really they want to see the art and so I think it was a chance as well to get connected with them to talk with them to also to get an, to get an idea what they what they want us to to talk about as well Mm-hmm. Yosef, you have a... Uh, yes. Well, you know, we, we were closed for nine weeks or so, or, or maybe eight, but uh, two months. And uh, I walked uh, in the beginning, it was very, very strange. You know, you walk through these, these galleries with so much art and a lot of it is old and has has uh, survived many, many crises like, you know, uh, the Reformation, wars, earthquakes, fires, uh, all kinds of struggles. Uh, and I was, it, it, I felt uh, it really touched me to sort of walk often through these uh, empty galleries. And then we, we discussed how can we get the art to the people? And, you know, there's many things you can do, although you cannot replace the very encounter with art, the physical one, you cannot replace with digital programs, but what I did is I we did two like walkthroughs. I did like walkthroughs through um, the, the gallery and just talked about things. And it felt like you're, you know, you're walking, if you walk through a forest, you, the forest, the, the trees are not speaking, you know, they're there, but they are sort of, they form, they, they are responsible for the forest. And I felt very similar like for the artworks you know we have these holbeins and these these strange and wonderful things from the 17th century and then you have Andy warhol and and you know you go to uh, to very contemporary uh, works and yet they these things are there but nobody can visit it it's uh, i felt the, this is something i want to convey to the to at least a, a portion of our public so we made video um, you know, uh, sort of guided tours, like like walking through a forest of uh, the empty museum, and um, it was important for me because I I talked about things that usually you don't talk. Also, I was forced to look really really carefully, and I the reactions we received were really great because as Ines said, you know, there's an enormous demand. There's an enormous demand to see art, to be in front of art, to be almost like consoled in a way by art. When I was in, uh, I went to the US in 2000, 2001, 9-11 happened and I was, it was a shock. And after it, we talked uh, among the museum directors and we all said, so, you know, the art has never before been more important than in, than in a moment of crisis like that. People really came to the, to the museums and, and without saying much, and they wanted to be the company of these things. And I believe that's, that's very, very important. And it's, it's kind of the core thing. So, so uh, I, I don't, know, don't know if this is an answer to your question, but it, it has led to some really important, you know, not just logistical, you know, sort of problem solving things, but also to 
think about your own role and what is really, really important and what is the highest, the highest priority if you if you are working in an environment like that. Well, I mean, it, it not only does it answer my question, but it does so in a, in a, in a beautiful way. I never thought, of course, about the fact that you're you're surrounded by the resilience of culture. You know, as you said, they've been through wars and reformations and and upheavals and and various plagues, and, and yet here they still are, saving, let's say, salving our souls in ways that that you know that they have for centuries. Um, Ioana, what are your what are, what's your reflection on this front? I would say I was. Um, it's not a. It's it's a bit difficult for me to understand the whole um, approach to young contemporary art um, from collector side and from the curator side. So um, I think it was also in talks you had where I. I think there were always this um, support of young contemporary art, really big topic. But on the other hand, at the same time, um, a lot of collectors said, oh, it's hard to explore an artist I, I, I don't know on digital formats. So I think this is really um, a big challenge for us, um, especially at Lista. Um, and this is actually something I learned also. Um, we tried, for example, now with our digital format, really to introduce an artist. Um, the galleries, they had a lot of different models um, where they could put content in this audio, video, text, and these kind of things. So really to get to understand a bit better the, um, the work of an artist, you, um, you have to discover yet. So um, I think this was a very interesting, or is still an interesting process for me, how, how to continue the stuff. At the same time, for example, we have, as a, what was really great, we have done this um, list the ask series. This is a social media campaign <clears throat> um, with collectors and curators actually in the week where the, in the June date um, of, of list of their bases. And I, I thought there it was very interesting to see how many of the collectors are really, for example, using Instagram to, to um, learn more about an artist or to work on this. So um, I think there, yeah, there is, um, it's still too early really to, to have a real plan about how to implement all of these new medias and all this. Um, in in the daily care business or so, but um, it's um, yeah, it's it's a lot to learn, I would say. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um. One question from the audience is: Do you think there are things that change during during this crisis? And it's only you know, it's only been six months, but it's been quite an eventful six months that that won't come back. Do you see? You know, are there are there significant losses that have occurred? Um, or do you think we'll be able to reset? Um, maybe I'll start with you, Ines. Um, you know, what, what's, you know, obviously there are temporary effects and then there are things which, which were lost in the crisis. Do you feel like there are things that have been lost in the crisis? Well, maybe on the one hand, but on the other hand, I think we won a lot of things. I think we, of course, we can't foresee what is coming and what the next, next crisis will be, how long the crisis will, will last. But I think at least we know exactly there's only one thing we can get prepared. We have to use our creativity. We have to start sharing ideas and thought. We have to work together like we're doing it right now. This is the only thing we can kind of be prepared for the next step. And we kind of, we are as here from the culture scene, I think, and field, we are kind of trained by the artist, aren't we? So the artists, they have to, they spend days and weeks and months alone, kind of locked in, the, in their studios. They have to be creative. They bring out wonderful things in that time. And then I think they're also not sure if it's good, if it's, it will be successful. So I think this is the normal kind of normal life for artists. And I think if we kind of adapt or think or experience as well, this kind of attitude, then I think we can kind of shape the tomorrow because we, there are, of course, there's ever always a lost behind, but I think there's so much 
good things we can kind of face if we get prepared to. Joseph, same question for you. Um, I yeah, I believe it's very hard to tell what the losses will be because it's too early, but there will be losses. I mean, we hear it, you know, there are institutions who might not survive. There will be uh, people who lose their jobs and it will create lots and that already has created lots and lots of pain and, and problems and we have suffering really. And I believe we don't see the end of that. But um, on the other hand, what I have heard uh, many times in the past six months uh, talking to artists and, and, and everywhere is they have worked um, very intensively. They, in many ways, they uh, told me at least, they have been so happy about being able to focus on their core business, which is to do work, you know, to, to, uh, to create art. And um, because this sort of acceleration spiral we're in, you know, this always quicker kind of crazy digital world we're in, it, it was bound to have a, a huge um, a kind of crisis like this one, I believe. And so I don't think it's really a surprise. We needed to get some kind of a break as a society. And uh, we, art is always, you know, is totally related to life and to the society and, and to uh, anything that, that we consider important and existential. So I believe um, what we go through now, there will be, there will be real losses. I am I, I'm, I'm very afraid that that is no, not avoidable. But on the other hand, we, we don't know yet how big these losses will be, but there's also a real gain from it, as, as uh, Ines said. You know, there's a, maybe a new kind of appreciation, maybe there's another kind of rhythm that we will um, take as a society, uh, and maybe another kind of sense of care, you know, because uh, we can't go on and destroy this planet as we actually do it. So, I believe um, this this is this is a kind of a wake up call, and we uh, and we it will not um, it, normalcy is gone. I believe there is no it, we cannot expect to be back to normal in a year from now. I believe this is a, this is a different world now. Um, bringing it back to Basel. Um, obviously, as we mentioned before, this has been a period where a lot of people work together who didn't work together before, not because they didn't want to, but just because they didn't have the time or the necessity. Um, you want to, as someone who came from outside and, and relatively recently, um, do you have the sense that this will continue? Do you see how it would continue? Obviously it will change a little bit, but do you have thoughts on, on how we all might work together in Basel in a way that we haven't before? You know, for me, it was from the beginning when I moved here to Basel two years ago, um, it was already incredible how welcoming people are and how supportive. So it's just a kind, here it feels like a kind of continuation, you know, that people are really helping each other. And um, so I, I'm not afraid at all that not in Basel um, continuing or um, going on in this sense or, so, or in this way or so I I'm I just hope more in the uh, more at least worldwide perspective that I hope um, that this continues. Great. Ines well, I think how do you see this continuing? Yeah to be honest you know I think I'm sure be this was only possible because we were already connected. We mm -hmm. see each other all the time. So there, I think there was a strong connection but still I think it's always good to know someone, how work, someone works during a crisis, because having a good, good time together is much easier. But now that we know each other also in times of crisis, I'm sure it will go on, because we know exactly, we can rely on each other. And there's, this is step one, and I'm curious what we will do on step two. Josef, do you want to tell us what we'll do on, no, I'm just kidding. I mean, but more seriously, I think, I mean, your institution has been, very, very involved in a way that I, I wouldn't take, I didn't take for granted at all, you know. Um, and I'm curious, you know, when you think, you know, you said that you're going to really reflect before you move forward into, into 2023 and beyond. I mean, um, has this been a time where you've, you've talked more about what you, what's possible within Basel and not just at the international level? 
not really because I really wanted to, and you know, we should have done more of it as always, and we hopefully will do more of it. I think you're already a big institution. Now, this institution only grew uh, four years ago to what it is now. You know, now we have three buildings and, you know, it's uh, still a really, really small staff for this huge, uh, actually, um, institution. And therefore, I believe for me, it's very important and a lot of my staff are new, like me too. So I believe it's very important that we uh, kind of work out, um, you know, different portions of the vision sort of together. And you need time to do that. And I believe strategic work has, has, um, has, has really never been more important than right now. And therefore, I wish we could have done more of it. Uh, it was not so easy, but we will do more of it. I see this, you know, thinking about programming 23 and beyond as, as sort of a, a, a task that we have, have to do as an organization. How do you react to the world? How do you, how, how, do you, how can you step back and sort of look critically at what you have done and are doing? And, uh, and that, that's a collective process. That's not a sort of a top-down kind of thing. So that takes time. So uh, I believe for many of my colleagues, actually, in uh, other you know, big institutions, London or, or wherever, I believe many of them have, have done similar things, think more strategically, think more about the future, slow down a little bit, uh, work locally, you know, um, have more sort of intense uh, exchange with local people, with local artists, but also local colleagues at the local public. I believe, you know, traveling will be uh, an obstacle for quite some time. Uh, hopefully people will travel more soon, but um, I believe it's not going to be completely the same thing. Good. Um, we're running out of time, so we're not going to be able to get to all the questions. I'd like to thank all of the panelists for your, your contributions. It was, it was a conversation that sort of zoomed in and out of Basel, but I think in the same sense, you know, on the one hand, this is a moment for bigger thoughts and also for, for focusing around where we are actually. Um, for those of you who submitted questions, thank you. Um, I'm sorry we didn't get to all of them. If you want to revisit this talk, it'll soon be on Art Basel's YouTube channel. So you can visit, you can see it there as well as on the Facebook channel. If you're in the Basel area, please, 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 if you can, if you can cross a border, if you can drive across, you know, here it is once again, four days full of arts and culture. Um, please come. I think it's going to be really interesting as someone who just went through two other bids to launch seeing each other, seeing art. I can't tell you how great it's going to feel, but I encourage you to come um, and see everything that's going on. And finally, thanks again for our panel. Um, we look forward to hearing you and from you and seeing, your, seeing what you're doing in institutions. And I look forward to seeing you in person this week and getting off of the Zoom. Thank you very much, everybody, for joining us. And have a great afternoon, evening, and morning. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Mark. Thanks a lot. Peace. Thank you. Yeah,